Hello, and welcome to episode 35 of Design Curious Podcast. I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. This week on the podcast, we are talking about CEO mindset. What is it? And why do you need to have it or manage it? Or what if you're just going to work for someone else? So we answer all of those questions in the episode today. And before we get into that, I want to remind you that you might want my download of the three things I wish I had known before I started my career in interior design. So you can go to the show notes and click on that link and get the download. We also have a download available for you if you are trying to decide if interior design is your career, you can download the roadmap to becoming an interior designer and I'll show you all the steps along the way. And you can also go back to podcast number 23, where I talk about that a little more in detail. So as we are getting, you know, we're episode 35 now. And so there's a lot of good information. If you go back in the episodes, I highly recommend even if you're just going to start out at episode one, where I even talk about an intro to interior design, what it is and how I got on the path to interior design. Um, that's a great place to start. So you might want to start there or you might want to start here and work backwards if you haven't been listening along, but I think all of them are great and you're going to get something out of each episode. All right, now let's get into CEO mindset. You're now listening to Design Curious, a place where you, creative one, are here to learn about what it really is like to be an interior designer. And I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. If you're worried about how to succeed in a creative career, if you're ready to learn your next steps to become an interior designer, and if you want the satisfaction of doing something you love every day, you are in the right place. Grab a coffee, a notebook, and let's dig into today's episode. Okay, CEO Mindset. Let's get some definitions in place because um, because I know you guys are just curious about the career and you might not even be even familiar what CEO is. CEO stands for Chief Executive Officer. <laughs> it is the highest position in a business, the top dog, I guess you could say. It's where the buck stops. <laughs> and, um, you know, it could be president of the company. But CEO is a pretty common term and one that is tossed around even for solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. And so what we are talking about today is the CEO mindset and the definition of a CEO mindset would be a set of psychological traits which form the makings of a successful business leader. And those might include confidence, resilience, or ambition. So why do you need to have a CEO mindset? And today, I guess I'm speaking more for people who are thinking about going into business for themselves as an interior designer. And if you're just starting out in the career, you might be working for someone. It's good to understand what your CEO is thinking about But also, you might think about going out on your own someday. Maybe you're just getting experience working for someone. So it's good to be mindful of this. Okay, so the reason why this comes up a lot, and I've noticed it a lot in coaching programs and podcasts that I listen to, is because when a designer gets into their own business, they're doing it because, and I've talked about this before, because they love the craft. They want to be a designer. They want to have the autonomy, maybe. And so they are thinking mainly about doing the design work. But when you own your own business, someone has to do all the business part of it. And it's likely going to be you. Someone needs to make those decisions. Someone needs to organize it. Someone needs to think about the branding and the messaging and processes and procedures, the finances, tracking expenses and making sure your income exceeds your expenses. So that is typically not the fun part for designers. If you remember back in episode 32 with Andrea Libros, she talked about coaching a designer who really did not want to be pinned down by processes and procedures. She said, every client, every project is different. I don't need methods. And really, Andrea wasn't able to help that person because 
if you're running a business, it has to have structure. And I am not naturally a structured person, I would say. I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. But setting it up myself, it's not my forte. Now, I do love business. I love being an entrepreneur. I love thinking creatively about new ideas I could do for my business, new offerings, how I can make the client experience better. But when it comes to spreadsheets, tracking finances, bookkeeping, all of that, processes and procedures, documenting everything, that is not for me. (laughs) So knowing that, I definitely have delegated it and outsourced it to my employees. Now, I didn't always have employees. I worked for the first several years uh, by myself. I would occasionally have interns, and that was helpful to have just someone else to work with, to have them filing papers or whatever, running get samples and things like that. So interns were nice. And then I hired someone part-time and then I hired her full-time and eventually was able to start delegating tasks that were not my favorite, that maybe my employee was much more suited for. That's when I first started having to think about being the CEO of my company. I'm actually in a position of leadership. And, you know, I'll jump in here and say that you are in a position of leadership, even if you are a solopreneur, because of the way that our job and industry is set up, that we have to work with a lot of other tradespeople. There's many people that come into our quote unquote team. And so you are managing those people for your project on your client's behalf. And so you are a leader, whether you have employees or not. So going back when I had employees, so I learned very slowly because like I said before, I didn't have coaching right away how to be a good leader and how to delegate. And it is hard. It is hard to let go. And I even let go of the designing process, which I I found that was fine for me as long as we did it collaboratively. I still got enjoyment out of it. I didn't have to be the one actually drafting up the floor plan. I could just come in and talk about it with them and then they could draft it for me. So learning to delegate is challenging because you're not really letting go of control, but you also are. (laughs) So you're not, not losing control of the project. You're not losing control of the design because ultimately your name's on the door, right? And so you have full control over it. And But it is really good for you and for your team if you can let them have some autonomy in the design process and in the tasks that you've given them. So learning how to be a good leader is a part of that CEO mindset and just understanding that you are a leader, that you need to be caring for your team, whether that is in-house or if that is contracted, virtual, you need to make sure that you are checking in with them just even on a personal level, sending them gifts on occasion and celebrating milestones and when they've done a good job, because that really goes a long way for you and for them to help the projects run better, help the team work together much better. One thing is, as we're thinking about all of the business things that you need to be doing as a business owner, Some designers have gone the route of having a partner in their business. So say that you're like, no, I really just want to be on my computer drafting all day, or I really just want to be out pulling samples all day. I want to be face to face with the clients. That's what I love about design. And that's what I want my business to be like. Then perhaps you bring in a partner who really excels more at running the business side, and you can then split the profits of the business. They can do what they're good at, you can do what you enjoy. And that is another way for having a company of your own, but not actually having to do all of the more business managerial side of it. As a CEO, you'll still or as a partner of the company, you'll still have decisions to make about the direction of the company and things like that if you want, but it's definitely alleviated by bringing in a partner. So that might be something for you. And another thing I'll bring up that I learned from Kimberly Selden, who is going to be on the podcast next week, is that even if you are a solopreneur, speak to the public and to your clients 
in a plural form. So you could say as a business, we do this. This is our policy. And in order to help you kind of have more conviction in saying that is a plural, because you as the company is an entity, is also understanding that your contract, she'll say, is is really your partner. It's the backbone. And you'll be like talking to a client and they'll be complaining about having added freight fees or something like that. And you say, like, well, our policy is, and you can see it's here in the contract, is that we charge you for freight fees. And so that's really something that can back you up and that you can really have confidence saying we, which helps you kind of get into the CEO mindset. We've kept seeing our company, we do this, we do that really will kind of elevate your mindset to be thinking about it on a more global scale uh, rather than just you as the worker in the company. And I'm not going to get too much into the employee side of companies because um, I know most people listening to this podcast are just starting out and they're not even thinking about having employees um, right off the bat. But you will probably want to consider delegating a few things. So if you can delegate even drafting or 3D rendering services, you can delegate your social media content creation, you can delegate measuring the house or anything really you can delegate you can bring someone in and or hire someone virtually and so that is a way to really help you grow as well so you want to think about your company it and it should grow over time and you're not going to want to stay small forever and you want it to stay manageable so you can do that by delegating uh, things to other people So there you have it, CEO mindset. I hope you have a better idea of what it is, why you need it, and start practicing saying we, if you own your own business, just a lot of good food for thought there as you're considering going into the career and, you know, working for someone else and then maybe eventually getting your own business. So don't forget, we have my design mentor, my membership program that you can join and have monthly coaching calls with me as well as there's 12 topic career guides in there that you can download and work your way through to explore all of the different topics that you might need to face as you're getting into the career. There's also a business starter kit available for purchase inside of that program. So that sounds like something that you might want to do. Go ahead and check it out on our website under My Design Mentor. Like I said, next week we have Kimberly Selden, my coach from Business of Design, on the podcast, and she's going to talk about her story, but she is definitely a proponent of this CEO mindset in your business because you have to take control of what's happening and work on your business as well as in your business. We can all get the satisfaction of being designers, but we also have to have a business that runs well, or else we will no longer be in business. <laughs> so we'll get all of her wealth of information next week. I'm so excited to talk with her. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And until then, stay creative. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode, please leave a rating and a review. This helps me reach other curious creatives like you. If you have a topic request or would like to contact me, simply head over to my website, rwarddesign.com or email me at podcast at rwarddesign.com.